These laws are so much a part of life that they are never questioned. They are undeviating and consistent. But there would be no such laws if there were no creative intelligent power manifesting itself through the universe. These principles of creation, the characteristics of the creative power itself, are as follows. I am translating them into your present tense because these principles are eternal. 1. The nature of the creative power is growth. Everything living always grows. Growth is a universal characteristic, an undeviating principle of existence. 2. The nature of the creative power is nutrition and nourishment. Nutrition and nourishment are a normal and marvelously organized process within bodies which is evident to all who would take the trouble to consider them. Nutrition is provided for all living things according to individual preferences, and the food is digested to promote health and well-being. When little creatures are born, milk is already supplied within the mother, ready and waiting for the newborn. This, too, is a mystifying principle of existence none can deny. No science can explain why such a fortuitous function within the system ensuring survival of the species should have originally come into being. The actual function itself may be understood, but not the why and the mainspring of the function. 3. The nature of the creative power is healing. Healing is a natural characteristic of existence and can be said to be a natural perfecting process which takes place to ensure individual comfort, but none can explain what prompts the activity of healing. 4. The nature of the creative power is protection. Protection is an integral characteristic of creative power, and all of its seeming miraculous activity in the world is geared toward protection. Today, your medical textbooks describe the various protective systems in your body, but when I was in the desert, I saw the characteristic of protection inherent in the intelligent creative power in the following way. As plants, birds, and animals were presented to me for inspired observation, I could see how every need of protection in bodies had been lovingly supplied with the greatest attention to detail. 5. The characteristic of protection is combined with the other dynamic characteristic of fulfillment of need. This was made clearly apparent in the provision of hair, fur, and feathers to protect the skin of living creatures and to provide warmth in the cold and shelter in the heat. I saw that the tender endings of important and sensitive fingers and toes were all provided with appropriate protection of hoof and nail. Eyebrows protected eyes from sweat. Eyelids and lashes protected eyes from dust and damage. I realized that those animals which attracted flies were equipped with the kinds of tails which would most speedily get rid of them. What a happy, joyous kind of love and caring were expressed in these small physical attributes, which seemed so small and inconsequential, and yet had such a profound bearing on the comfort of all living things. These physical luxuries, added to the basic physical design, were clearly the product of an intelligence which intended creation to be comfortable and happy, free of the stress which would have been experienced by man and beast if these luxury items had not been given them. Even the natural functions were so intelligently and comfortably designed as to call forth thanksgiving. Everything tucked so neatly out of sight, how blessed, how fortunate was mankind to be born into a life so wonderfully provided for. Again my praises soared and I was lifted on an inner golden light of rapturous wonder, for now I saw that, in addition to freedom from stress, living creatures were also meant to express the exuberant loving nature of the creative power. For this reason, they were equipped with limbs, arms, hands, legs, and feet, fingers and toes, to enable them to move about, to run, leap, and dance to be able to express their inmost thoughts and feelings. I even felt that if mankind longed to fly and grow wings and believe with all their hearts that they could do so, eventually they would begin growing something additional to enable them to fly. It was at this point of understanding of the nature of the creative power that I came into the full consciousness of the love 
directing the works of the universal, intelligent, creative power. As I pondered this love, I realized that the mother in creation nourishes, protects, fulfills the needs, and tries to promote the healing of offspring. This is the activity of love. 6. The innate characteristic of the loving, intelligent, creative power, which has given creation its individual form and being, is work. It works for us, in us, and through us. Its work is always, always, always prompted by love. This cosmic revelation filled me with joy and astonishment. What a wonderful world we lived in. It was the culminating point in my enlightenment and my overall view of the truth concerning the source of all being. I had already seen the reality of the physical bodies composed of various communities of identical, infinitely tiny entities working in a spirit of cooperation and harmony to produce the various components of the body, flesh, bone, blood, to eyes and hair. The only difference between these communities lay in the type of work demanded by their common goals. Surely the divine impulse behind all this intelligent, purposeful activity in the body was both the inspiration and foundation of man's own conduct when people worked in unison to produce a planned objective. They drew intelligence and purpose from the creative power, yet how very different was man's behavior when engaged in earthly construction or any other communal project, for it was inevitably characterized by arguments and dissension. I was brought to the realization of the infinite power of the intelligent creativity, ever active within creation, maintaining order, cooperation, harmony, daily productivity, unequal by man, anywhere, at any time. 7. Survival was a natural characteristic of the creative power. In every case, the most wonderful provision had been made for all living things to grow, be healed of illnesses and injury, nourished in order to keep the body healthy, and to produce its own kind in order to ensure survival on this earth. This was the only reality mankind could be absolutely sure of, and its activity was consistent, year in and year out. The sun, moon, stars, all remained in their places for millennia, and it was recognized that they all possessed their own path of movement. This phenomena was all a part of the grand scheme for survival in creation. If this was so, how could there not be survival of the eternal flame of loving, intelligent, creative power hidden within the creative entities of every living kind in the universe? Therefore, this world was but a shadow and image of the hidden worlds of loving, intelligent, creative power beyond this dimension. The reality of the entirety of creation lay beyond this visible world. 8. The inherent characteristic of loving, intelligent, creative power was rhythm. I saw that there was a rhythm in the operation of the world. Everything was subject to seasons, which gave a blossoming and a burgeoning of life, a growing season coming up to the ripening and harvest, and the production of seeds which ensured the survival of plant life. Then there was the gradual dying away and rest period of winter, but nothing created and living was allowed to become extinct. The sun and the moon expressed these characteristics within the universe. This rhythm could even be seen in the females of living things. Therefore, everything in creation had its due time for appearance and harvest, it followed that man himself was subject to tides of growth and success and tides of dormancy. 9. The inherent characteristic of the loving, intelligent, creative power was law and order. The undeviating order and reliability apparent in creation, even governing the tiny entities, cells, within the body, were astonishing and far transcended any human endeavor. Therefore, the entire universe was operating under a system of perfect law and order. I realized on ever higher and higher levels of spiritual exaltation that the creative power exhibited intelligent purposefulness and loving concern for all living things. I realized that life was not something nebulous or amorphous, but an intelligent, loving creative power 
which I could actually feel within myself as a tremendously heightened state of being, perception, radiance, ecstasy, joy, love. I knew myself to be one with it, filled with it, and I was one with everything around me and one with the sky and the stars. And most wonderful and glorious of all, the very nature and function of this Father creative power was to work in order to create joy, beauty, comfort, to ensure mankind's well-being, to work within mankind to provide interior joy, health, and comfort, and to work through mankind, inspiring him with new realization and understanding. Wonderful vistas of glorious creativity came to mind. Once we became truly at one, purified channels and instruments of the intelligent creative power, we could gradually ascend in consciousness until we truly expressed through our minds and hearts the very nature of the universal creative power. Then life on earth would indeed become a state of heaven at all times and we would enter into a state of eternal life. This must surely be the true goal behind creation, I thought, and it came to me with a surge of elation and loving joy that this was the purpose for which man had been evolved and developed. But even at this present time, although mankind was so very imperfect in his behavior, absolutely nothing was impossible to him in the future, since despite his wrongdoing, he was one with the creative power, and the creative power was within him, giving him life, limb, and everything else he needed. All of this realization lifted me to heights of rapture, elation, and sublime ecstasy, so that I was scarcely able to bear it. I felt my body must dissolve with the expansion of power within me. I was so irradiated with light and could see it all around me, illuminating the desert scene. My heart sang in praises. How wonderful and beautiful was the loving creative power which worked in, through, and for us unceasingly. What a miracle was creation! I cried out loud, You are the source of all being, both creator and also manifested within and through the created. There is nothing in the entire universe which is apart or separate from this limitless eternal infinity of divine life, creative power consciousness, that you are. How then is it possible that mankind is so sinful? Why do people suffer disease, misery, and poverty? Tell me, O oh loving, loving Father, creative power, because I have been heavily burdened with the pain of their miserable lives. Then I was shown the reality of the earthly condition of all living things. I felt immense excitement because at last I would be able to understand how it was that such a loving divine creative power could allow its creation to endure such misery. I was shown that every living thing in creation should be radiantly healthy, cared for, nourished, protected, healed, maintained in peace and plenty, prospered within an orderly society of beings, extending only love to each other. However, at the moment of creation, two basic impulses came into being, ensuring individuality, and it was these which controlled mankind's consciousness. These impulses were explained to me in detail, but this knowledge is reserved for a future letter, when you will be better able to understand it. I was shown the following vivid vision. First of all, I saw a newborn babe as light, a life form of creative power. As the baby grew into childhood, then manhood, I saw the pure light of the creative power gradually dimmed, then obscured altogether in him by a dense wrapping of chains and thongs. I questioned the meaning of the vision, and there came to my mind a clear understanding which may be expressed in the following words. From birth to death, people believe and insist that their five senses of sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste correctly predicate the reality of themselves and the universe around them. Therefore, because they draw their mind power direct from divine creative power, it is done to them according to their beliefs. Each thong represents a person's habitual thoughts, responses to people and events, prejudices, hates, animosities, anxieties, sorrow, all of which bind him down and shut out the light from his inner vision, 
drawn from the creative power. Thus he enters into darkness, but he does not know it. He believes he is growing up and becoming mature in the ways of the world, which will enable him to forge ahead and make good, become successful, the aim of most people on earth. In fact, the more mature he becomes and versed in worldly ways, the more densely do his chains and thongs imprison him within the grip of the twin impulses of bonding rejection. Furthermore, each chain is forged out of selfish and deceitful desires, greed, aggression, violence, and rape. These chains hang heavy around him and burden the psyche, which is the creative consciousness power deep within him. Chain and thong will bind him tighter with every passing year until he realizes what he is doing to himself and sincerely repents each thong and chain and makes due restitution to others whom he has harmed. With this vision, I learned a valuable aspect of existence. Man himself is born with all the potential to make a beautiful life for himself, but he himself, by indulging his selfish desires and hatreds, creates a prison of misery for himself from which there is no escape until such time as he realizes the truth of existence. All the problems of harsh existence lay within the thought processes of man himself. Only people's consciousness forms, their thoughts, words, feelings, actions created a dense barrier between their consciousness and the universal creative consciousness interpenetrating the universe in every leaf, tree, insect, bird, animal, and human being.